Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Lost Highway to Atlantis Some people think Atlantis, if it ever really existed, is located in the Mediterranean. But there is another train of thought that says the lost city of Atlantis is in the Caribbean. And believe it or not, there is actually physical evidence to back up this claim. A road on the bottom of the ocean has been discovered with paving stones of huge rectangular blocks. The road appears to be a lost underwater highway to what was once a great city. Interestingly enough, in the 1930s, American mysticist Edgar Cayce predicted that Atlantis is located in the Atlantic Ocean and that parts of Atlantis would rise again off the east coast of North America. Casey talked quite a lot about Atlantis over a 20-year span and made numerous claims about it, including that it was an ultra-advanced society that was far ahead of modern humans and that its last remnants sunk into the Atlantic Ocean 10,000 years ago. He also believed that Atlantis was a series of islands that occupied a combined area as big as Eurasia. Before Atlantis disappeared, he said that there was a mass exodus of residents from the island who fled to Egypt, meaning some Atlanteans actually survived, if you believe Casey's version of events. A diver discovered a submerged structure 18 feet underwater in the Bahamas in 1968, right around the year Casey had said, near the island of Bimini. This limestone rock formation appears to be a road or part of some other man-made structure and is now known as Bimini Road. Naturally, because of Casey's premonition, some people believe that the Bimini Road or the Bimini Wall either was part of Atlantis or led there. You have to admit that's a pretty good call on Casey's part, whether it's Atlantis or not. There isn't actually any trace of Atlantis at the end of the road, but it could be hidden under centuries of sediment. It might also be that the legendary city was destroyed beyond recognition during an earthquake or a flood, or it may never have existed at all. Number 9. Lost Japanese Warplane Tetsuro Hayashi is the 74-year-old dive shop operator who discovered the wreckage of a mysterious Japanese warplane. He found it off the coast of Kyushu. It was a total fluke of a discovery, but one so interesting and important that the Japanese Welfare Ministry became involved. These are the people in charge of collecting the remains of dead Japanese soldiers. Because the warplane was used by the Imperial Japanese Navy in World War II, it's believed to hold at least some physical remains of the pilots who went down with their plane. The central government approved a search for human remains back in June. The wreckage is sitting at a depth of about 60 feet, only 900 feet from the northern tip of the island. The aircraft is a Type 97 attack bomber, a three-seater plane used in the 1941 attack on Pearl Harbor. These airplanes were also used in kamikaze attacks in the Pacific War. Dive teams haven't found any bodies just yet, but they are looking. The issue is that much of the wreck has been covered by sand. They have to dig through the sand of the seabed with their hands looking for artifacts, bones and anything else. It's possible after all of this time that there will be little left to discover, but the sea is always revealing new mysteries. Number 8. The Sunken Town of Pablo Petri the town of Pablo Petri can be found at the bottom of the sea floor off the coast of southern Greece. In 1904, the submerged remains were first identified by a geologist named Folkion Negris. It wasn't until 1967 that Nicholas Fleming from the University of Cambridge took a team of archaeologists to the location and discovered the real scale of the site. Just 60 feet from the coastline, there lies the remains of the Mycenaean town, measuring seven acres in size. Modern excavations have revealed a city of ridiculous proportions. It was occupied as early as 3500 BC, with some of its stone walls still standing. Archaeologists have found the foundations of streets, the remains of courtyards, houses, as well as graves from the Bronze Age covered in sea muck. The discovery of a shocking number of looms and loom weights suggests the town boomed thanks to a textile industry. And because of its position on the coast, it was also probably a major trading post. Sadly for the residents of the city, it was that advantageous position on the coast that led to it being sucked into the sea. Geologists theorize the town submerged as a result of regional faulting. Tectonic activity led to convergence and subduction, and so the town fell beneath sea level. It was submerged by several feet of water before the time of the Romans, and as a result, 
was completely abandoned. Number 7. Soviet Submarine Wreckage In February of 1968, a Soviet submarine left its port in Russia. Its mission was to vanish beneath the water off the west coast of the United States, armed with three nuclear missiles. Each of these missiles was 65 times more dangerous and explosive than the one dropped on Hiroshima. Two weeks into its mission, something went wrong. The crew missed a scheduled transmission and all contact was lost. The submarine wasn't found again until August of that same year, three miles beneath the surface of the ocean. We still don't know exactly what happened to it. What we do know is that the Americans realized the Soviets were looking for something after the sub went missing in 68. The U.S. used their own acoustic technology to find out where it could be. They marked it, but didn't immediately bother going down to try and recover it. Considering how deep the submarine sank, it seemed like a lot of work. But they did try to get it about a decade later. The attempt was in 1974 on the ship Glomar Explorer. The ship, disguised as a deep-sea mining vessel but operated by the CIA, trying to use a hydraulic claw to lift the submarine and the nuclear missiles it was carrying off the floor of the ocean. It was a massive failure. The claw managed to get a single section off the seabed, but then it broke. The claw cracked, the mission had to be abandoned, and the submarine is still there. In fact, the mysteriously destroyed submarine and its weaponized cargo are both still on the bottom of the ocean kind of makes you wonder just how many other Soviet or other submarines with nuclear capabilities are lost deep down in the ocean. Number 6. Underwater Mayan Salt Kitchen The ancient Maya of Mexico and Guatemala are famous for a lot of things, from amazing architecture to a captivating culture. But they are also famous for maintaining a consistent supply of salt up until their disappearance a thousand years ago. Researchers have been struggling to figure out how people living deep in the jungle were able to get so much salt. And as it turns out, it's because the coastal Mayans had salt kitchens. They traded the salt that they mined from the salt flats on the Yucatan coast to those in the jungle. This realization was thanks to a research team who discovered some of these salt kitchens hidden underwater off the coast of Belize. In the oxygen-free sediment, they found the remains of Maya dwellings and the factories where they boiled brine in pots to create salt. This salt was shipped all over the kingdom and used in everyday cooking. The practice dates back roughly 2,500 years. Studying these submerged kitchens was not easy. Researchers had to take whatever small samples they could find from the bottom of the ocean and ship them back to their laboratory. The samples consisted primarily of wooden pieces from buildings and pottery shards. They are now confident there were at least 10 salt kitchens in this one coastal area, along with residences for the workers who lived there full time. But when sea levels started to rise and the coastal cities began flooding, the kitchens were abandoned. This was sometime around the year 900, at the very end of the Mayan civilization. Number 5. The Mary Rose the Mary Rose was King Henry VIII's favorite warship, but during an epic battle with the French in 1545, it sank. The ship then spent the next few centuries rotting at the bottom of the sea. It sat on the floor of the English Channel until it was brought to the surface in 1982. When King Henry ordered the construction of the ship, he was only 19 years old. He'd come into power the year before. At the time, the Mary Rose was the most technologically advanced warship on the planet. It could carry eight huge guns and weighed somewhere around 600 tons. It sailed in two wars against the French before it capsized in battle for unknown reasons. The crew of about 500 went down with the ship. The Mary Rose was discovered in 1971. For the next 10 years, over 500 divers and researchers helped excavate the vessel. They removed each artifact one piece at a time through a painstaking process. Then, in 1982, the hull of the ship was raised to the surface. Half of it was still perfectly intact. Experts treated the ship in polythylene glycol to stabilize it and then brought it to Portsmouth in the UK, where it is still on display right now. Can you believe that it survived all this time? Number 4. Mysterious Wooden Stakes Historians have been baffled by the collection of strange wooden stakes in the shallow water off the coast of Vancouver Island in Canada. Spread out along the intertidal zone in the Comox estuary 
over 150,000 sticks can be seen during low tide. Nobody has ever been sure what these things are, as they've just kind of always been around. But now, archaeologists finally think they have the answer. They say these sticks are actually the remains of hundreds of ancient fishing traps left behind by the First Nations people of Canada 1,300 years ago. The fishing traps were probably used up until the last century. But during their peak, before the Europeans came and took over the land, the fishing traps provided food for somewhere around 12,000 Comox people in the Comox Valley. Nobody could figure out what they were because they've been gradually destroyed by the comings and goings of the tide. Most of the time, they are submerged underwater. But once archaeologists figured out the sticks were used as fishing traps, it was easy to connect the dots. When the tide came up, fish would swim into an opening, which led them inside of a trap with lattice panels connected from post to post. When the tide receded, the fish got stranded and couldn't get out. But the water never went out enough that the fish died. This allowed the traps to act as holding ponds to keep the fish alive and fresh for eating. Number 3. Submerged City of Dwarka Dwarka is India's version of Atlantis. The city is said to be one of the seven great holy pilgrimage centers of India, except that nobody's ever seen it. Legend says the city was built by the ancient kingdom of Krishna at the meeting of the Gomti River and the Arabian Sea. But after Lord Krishna's death, the city sank into the Arabian Sea and vanished forever. That's how the legend goes, but now it's time to look at reality. For the last 50 years, archaeologists have been searching for any piece of evidence that the sunken city exists. And believe it or not, they've actually found a lot of stuff off the coast. They've found old stone blocks, submerged pillars, hundreds of artifacts strewn across the sea floor, and suggestions of a great city wall. The problem is that nobody can say exactly what any of these things belong to. Archaeologists are still excavating the bottom of the sea in hopes of finding the foundation of a city, or even proof of a large settlement. But so far, all they are finding are bits and pieces of structures that could have come from anywhere. The search is still on for more proof of the lost city of Dwarka. Number 2. The White Ship A man named Lord Charles Spencer was exploring the shallow waters off the coast of France when he came across the remains of an ancient longboat. The vessel comes from the 12th century and is now called the White Ship. It sank near Normandy on November 25, 1120. At the time, it was one of the biggest and fastest ships in the world. But when it sank, it killed just about every single crew member. One man survived and 299 died. Among the dead was William Adeline, the grandson of William the Conqueror. The sinking of the White Ship was such a huge disaster that it left King Henry I without a male heir to take his throne. This threw the English monarchy into chaos as they scrambled to figure out what would happen to the royal line. This was one of the most dramatic sinkings in English history. It completely disrupted the monarchy, ruined King Henry I's dream of his son taking the throne, and was just generally terrible. But what's really interesting is that the man who found it, Charles Spencer, is Princess Diana's brother. He was part of the diving expedition that went down specifically to recover the white ship. It's in shockingly good shape for a wreckage that's nearly 1,000 years old. Number 1. Submerged Stonehenge At the bottom of Lake Michigan, of all places, researchers discovered a series of stone circles. These stone circles have been compared to Stonehenge in England, except they are located right in the middle of the Great Lakes region. Who made the stone circles and why has become something of a mystery. The earliest humans who inhabited the Great Lakes, as far as historians know, were the Hopewell. They were a culture of Native Americans who vanished around the year 800, just a century or two before the Maya were gone. After them, the late woodland Native Americans made this area their home. But researchers still don't know which culture built the stone circle, or if it was a different group entirely. In fact, Figuring out who built the Lake Michigan Stone Circle has proved even more difficult than figuring out who built Stonehenge. In the US, we are dealing with a submerged stone circle at the bottom of a lake. A lake where countless prehistoric tribes came and went over the millennia. The one thing that helps is knowing the geological history of the region. Scientists are fairly sure that 10,500 years ago, the water level of the lake was low enough that somebody could have built something on the bottom. 3,500 years later, the lake filled back up. 
This means at some point during the lake being an empty crater, somebody went in and put up a bunch of stones. They probably abandoned the area when the water levels rose and forced them out. Thanks for watching. What's your favorite underwater city or submerged ruin? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back soon. See you later. Bye.